Alright, okay, it's Kiki with Home with Kiki and I am coming to you with my painting tips that I've learned through the years and that I've also kind of picked up from my um, painters on site when I work with clients and staging clients. I always like am over the shoulder watching and asking questions so that I can come home and paint my own house, which I have done quite a few times because I change it up every few years little problem um but this time i'm coming to you with lowe's lowe's home improvement and i'm sharing all my favorite products and what i use how i use it um, and why i use it and then actual video of me showing you how to do it i'm going to try to pop it in here um and if not it's on my instagram stories under paint tips so let's get started so i have a lot of products <laughs> laid out for you that I love, but we're gonna start from the beginning kind of working your way. Um, before you can even start painting, you really need to prep your walls, obviously. Um, I wasn't, and sometimes I still have issues getting a perfect surface, uh, but I've learned from great crew that were here recently that really taught me the tools and everything that I need. So when it comes to patching walls, I have my fave. It's easy to use, it's easy to spread, and I prefer, and I don't know if it's a rule or not, but I learned that I like to use um, a plastic two inch, I don't know what these are called, but my pla plastic spatula type thing. Um, it's just easier for me, um, and you just lay it on, you let it dry, and I tend to like make sure it's all smooth. Um, you let it dry, and then you really wanna make sure it's dry, and that's probably the biggest key. Uh, I tend to wait overnight just to be safe. Now, I, you have to sand it down before you paint and you really wanna get a smooth finish. The best way to get your smooth finish is obviously with changing out your sandpaper, going from a more coarser grit to a finer grit. Uh, I always am like picking 220 to 140 uh, just I get nervous with extra coarse and scratching and this was introduced to me a few weeks ago by a crew member that was here and I absolutely love it so I grabbed one at Lowe's it has a great strong handle you change out your paper comes just like this you put it in and I honestly was able to sand down this whole wall was actually like a massive hole um, in order to put all our shelving units there had to be extra support in the back because we didn't have the studs in the right place or like I was just nervous that everything was gonna fall off um, so this massive hole was actually patched up drywall and then at night I was able to sand down you can't even tell um, where any of the patching was and I sanded it and sanded it and then with your hand honestly you just got to use your hand and feel how smooth it is and once it was smooth wipe it off and you're good to go now after that oh, I kind of should show you so I don't have a big house I don't have a tool shed I don't have a big craft room so I organize actually my painting stuff in different uh, tools in buckets so I can keep everything in here and I do keep it all in my bucket and I can take my bucket everywhere okay, now um, we're gonna start with this drop cloth because I'm obsessed with using drop cloths for painting um, you only really should be using plastic I know a lot of people go and buy a ton of plastic you use plastic when there's gonna be dust so to cover off um, maybe a table or furniture, a, a, a countertop, um, so that you can just roll it up with the dust and throw it away. Uh, otherwise, you should be using a drop cloth. Um, you don't want to use a drop cloth, I believe, when there's going to be a lot of dust because then it's just going to be all over here. You can shake it off, but trust me, dust is not fun. Okay, so I want to show you that once, you know, when you're doing the patching, then what's going to happen is you probably got to do a little caulking. Um, there's two types of caulk. You can caulk after around windows or trim work, and then you could do, use a paintable caulk. Um, I caulk 
before and then I do an uh, acrylic, a different type of caulk after for touch-ups and to seal in spaces. Now, when it comes to, um, you get, you obviously have your caulking gun. I'm gonna actually put my drop cloth back down. You have your caulking gun. Everything is in your caulking gun. So this little hole there actually exists for a reason. It breaks open, there. It breaks open your caulking gun, takes out the tip, so no scissors, no knife is needed. And then this part, it's also there for a reason. You stick it in, bring it out, and push it in, and you're kind of breaking in, in there, and you can see I got caulk. So that means I went through, and then you stick it in, and you start pumping, and you're ready to go. Now, if you don't use all of this, no big deal. You wrap it in saran wrap, and then I usually just put a rubber band to hold it tight, and it'll last you forever. Obviously, this is a brand new one. I'm not worried about it going dry, because I'm just going to seal it up. Okay, now I got my next big favorite to show you. When it comes to paint. So for the kitchen, I used a high gloss enamel for all the trim works, all the baseboards, um, all the window trims. And then I used Vaspar Signature for my walls. Um, and what I want to show you about this is that I used, well, I am a messy painter. Um, I try not to be, but I sometimes have music on. And so... I've learned ways not to be so messy, and I found these tricks. The ultimate new favorite toy is my paint. I, this is by Sherline. Um, I actually got two now, so I want to show you how it works. So it is not convenient to carry around a gallon of paint when you're painting. Um, you really you want to. You can use a red solo cup. Or you can grab a holder, which I love this now. It has a magnetic strip here that will hold your brush. Look at that! Uh, but let me show you what I do first. So you get your Sherline top, and you really seal it in just like a water bottle or, you know, a can. And you make sure it's all around. I always lift this just to double check. Once it's on and you have these two off, you don't have to put this back on. If it's taking you a couple days to paint, which it does here with three kids and everything and work, um, you don't need to take this off at night or when you finish and put your paint top back on. This can stay on. It seals in the paint and keeps it nice. Uh, you need to make sure that your top is closed and that the air pocket hole is also closed. And then you can just keep this on for days. Now, when you're ready to paint, just open your top. I open the air pocket hole, and look at this. You're not gonna have, I mean, I'm sure we all have it where our cans of paint are like covered in paint. And when I mean covered, I mean here it's like all over paint. I had that issue, but look, nothing. Like literally a drip. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Wipe on your cloth. I close the air pocket hole, put this aside, grab, and go. And I'm ready. And this has my magnet and everything. Now, you're ready to start painting. I use two types of brushes. I'm obsessed with the short bristle brush. Um, when I mean short, I mean the handle. Um, I just feel like for me it has a stronger grip and I always used a angled brush as well. I don't go big. Um, I'll show you why I have a small brush. I do not go big. Um, and then I have on the Instagram show story showing you how with just a brush I can tape, I can paint around trim work and everything without using tape. If you feel like you need tape, there's always frog tape. Frog tape is my favorite. Um, I've had some issues with other tape. 
Frog tape is my favorite. Um, I've had some issues with other tapes and trying to peel them off. Frog tape is great, also available at Lowe's. If you feel like you're not there yet where you can paint without tape, that's fine. Grab yourself some paint. If you feel like you've been painting for a while and you want to try or you just don't have the time to seal off everything with tape, here's a couple tips when you're painting and you're not using tape. First and foremost, you want to don't, it's not about getting the smaller brushes, um, like getting a half inch brush. I love a two inch brush. I usually always get a two inch brush. I get the short handle. This is pretty. Um, and I get it angled and I get a secure hold on it. Now, my paint's in here, ready to go. And the secret, and this is also on Instagram stories when I was, um, the video is actually going around all the trim, but I'll show you right now. The secret is you put the paint on the side of the brush that you are uh, that you want to paint the wall or the trim on, let's say. So let's say you're painting your window trim and the trim is on your left side and the wall's on the right side. So don't put any paint on the side of the brush that will touch the wall. You put it on the side of the brush only that's going to be that you want painted. So as you can see, I'll dip it, but you see how I don't have that much paint on one side of the brush? I really have paint just on the other. Always just take off excess paint, always. So you can see on one side, let me show you over here. So you can see on one side, I have, how do you show this? I have almost no paint there, but on the other side is where I have a lot of paint and that's where it's going on the trim. Now, I the other trick that someone once taught me, a painter, was when you are painting, you really use your knuckles as a guide, which I thought was the best tip ever. So if I'm painting my window trim and this is my wall like they're almost together put your knuckles up against the wall and guide it with your knuckles never moving off the wall and it can't the brush won't touch the wall and if you practice with it i swear it really really works um, so I have my metal knuckle, it's up against the wall, and it's guiding all the way down with no paint ever touching the wall. So tip number one, put paint only on the side that you want to paint the trim on. Don't put it on the wall side. Use your, usually your middle knuckle, your biggest knuckle, um, as a guide coming down up against the wall. And then the third tip is all about pressure. So you f start at a spot, apply a little pressure and start moving down and that's it um, I'm gonna try to throw a clip in here of how I did it when I was actually painting all the trim work from um, my Instagram story so you could see how that goes